KwaZulu-Natal's Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs has told municipalities to expect heavy rain that may cause flooding and structural damage. Municipalities that may be affected inc include Abakolusi, um, Kambatini, Ndweswe, in Castle, Mutu, and the Itekwini Metro. We are indeed greatly concerned about the situation. We remain on high alert. Uh, because yesterday uh, we received a notice from the South African Weather Services that um, the rain will, which started like uh, yesterday in the evening and will continue until tonight, midnight, according to the South African Weather Services. So um, the MEC for uh, KZN Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, uh, Ms. Bonis Tolem uh, immediately activated all the traditional centers and appealed to the municipalities and communities, particularly those uh, who are living in low-lying areas, in formal settlement and in houses that are built like mud houses to move to, say, to safer areas and also monitor the, 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 the water level. Uh, but what I can tell you is that uh, all our disaster management uh, teams in all the municipalities have been mentioned from the south coast uh, in Renkonyeni, uh, Tewini Metro, Watuguza, or all the way to the far north in uh, Itumbe municipality in the inla inland in Mautu, Newcastle. Uh, so all those municipalities, uh, the disaster management team are uh, on standby. Uh, they are ready to respond to any challenges that may arise. And, and we also have prepared... Uh, pardon me for coming um, in there. Have you had to respond to any incidents so far? No, no serious incidents that have been reported to us so far. So we... we we are, we are very happy about that and we're hoping the situation will remain like that until um, these rains have passed. Now, Spanis, while it is commendable, of course, to issue um, these warnings, but the reality is that, you know, some of the people in these low-lying areas, as we've seen in the past, may, number one, either refuse to be moved and some of them also saying that they have nowhere else to go. So how then are you dealing with that at a practical level to ensure that no one is in danger? No, definitely. I think one one of the reasons that we've learned from the free, previous disasters is to educate our people about the disasters and dangers and also to warn them about the areas that they they live in. So what we do normally when we receive like serious warning through our disaster management centers and our municipalities, we do alert people that in case of this emergency, we'll uh, have to move them whether in uh, community halls, in schools, so that we make sure that we save lives, that because we don't want any life to be loved in this match, especially, especially after we have received the warning. So we we really hope and understand that our people will hear the, the call and uh, cooperate with uh, our personnel from the ground that when we issue or if we evacuate them, should we see that the water levels have reached a certain level, they will cooperate and move to the safer areas. And if they don't heed the call, what happens? No, obviously we will have to act. Uh, I, I, I think during disasters, we there will be really no time to negotiate because what's important is to save lives. So uh, this, the, 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 the safer areas are already on standby. Should people uh, need to be moved, they will be moved to those areas.